The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 8th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question but you can't dial in, I've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And in the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our target stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. Seems like almost every day we start, we've got a mixed bag. This mixed bag looks like this. You got the Dow trade up 151 points, SP is up six, NASDAQ 105, Russell's up 20, semis are up 79, the trannies are back 99 points. Gold's off about 16 bucks, silver's down 19 cents, light recruit off 40 pennies, natural gas up a nickel, 30 treasury is off four ticks, printed out at 118.22. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Super Microcomputer, $56 move, that's nearly 7%. 75% for Morphic Holding. That's a $55 move. Broadcom up 22 bucks, a little over 1%. MicroStrategy, 15 bucks over 1%. Alta Beauty up about $10. That's a 2.5% move there. Our shakers to the downside, you've got ServiceNow down 38 bucks, 5%. Hillevax down 12 bucks, 87%. Yikes. Adobe is down uh, 12 bucks, 2%. Intuit down about 10 bucks, 1.5%. Uh, Facebook, Meta down about 10 bucks. That's a nearly a 2% move there. And Palo Alto Networks off 2.5%, nearly nine points to downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day like we have over the last couple weeks. That New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator did, in fact, on Friday close above the zero. A threshold level. That was two consecutive days in a row. That tells us that buyers are the one that have the edge and are in control of the market. That would suggest that maybe this is going to run up towards that oversold reading of the 150 level. And as long as that condition remains bullish, combined with a spot volatility that is below its 50 day exponential moving average, those conditions are bullish. We should see a SP 500 that continues to rise further. If we take a look at the ES Mini, that's in the right hand panel, bottom right hand panel out here, you'll see an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside price projection at 5678 so the spy will have an a to b equals cd pattern the s p cash index will have that the es mini will have that maybe even the rsp in fact we'll check on that to see if in fact that is the case out there uh anything else on this set of tabs out here that we need to look at that's really a question for me not for you and steve is going to say no i don't think so let's go switch over to those white background charts out there uh, so if you give me a moment, I just have to figure out again how to do that. Um, come on, pop up on the screen here. Make it easy for Stevie. There we go. Now that we're at DraftKings, we're not going to start there. Where we're going to start with is, let's start here. Let's start with the Dow Equity Future contract. Oh, actually, let's take a look at the daily time frame uh, for the Dow, represented by four different instruments out there. You've got the uh, Future contract. Out here, we've got the uh, cash index, we've got the Dow Diamonds, and then we've got the equal-weighted Dow. So in the case of the uh, 
uh, in case of the uh, equity future contract, price right now is trading above the top of its profile, 39,739. The key level to be watching here is going to be, let me just get my cursor and I'll give you the exact date out there. It's going to be the high from the trading session of June 24th. And that high is at 39,999. So if we see a close above that, that's going to then suggest that price you run up to 44.33 out there. There's another A to B equals CD pattern that would go into effect. No reason for us to put that in there right now. We know that that next resistance level would be up at 44.33. In the case of the cash index out there, it's taking on a similar swing point. In fact, it is the June 24th swing point. And if the cash index can close above that high, that high being 39.571, then we should see a move up to the 39.906 level out there. The uh, Dow Jones cash index does have a sell the D point pattern. Uh, the same as with the Dow Diamonds. The Dow Diamonds a pattern would be negated with the close above that June 24th swing point. And that is up at 395.59. We're 395.33 right now. Watch the 59 number out there. Volume on that uh, day was 3 million shares. So far today, we're at 1.6 million shares. That's not too bad from a volume standpoint. So you got the Dow Diamonds pushing higher with volume. But the key here is does it close above that June 24 swing high? In the case of the equal weight for the Dow, it doesn't have any clue what we're talking about. It's got a sell the D point pattern with price trading into its bearish uh, resistance zone. Uh, bearish resistance sell zone is what I really should say between 3396 and 3407. So that's what's going on for the instruments on a daily basis that make up the Dow. Let's go uh, continue on with this process. Let's go take a look at the NQ. The NQ trading above profile in a daily time frame, trading above its greenhouse during change line. It is in bullish condition. It does have that roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That just says carry your umbrella with you if you're going to go out. And it does say that it will start to get a big thunderstorm if you were to see a bearish reversal candle. That thunderstorm would uh, likely last for at least a couple of days out there. If we take a look at the cash index out there. Cash index, similar patterns to the uh, future contract. We're in bar number seven today. Roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered there are a to b equals cd patterns to the upside you and i we took a good the nq pattern earlier at the update that nq pattern would be trying to get to its 1 to 1.272 expansion and that's up at 29.37 the q's going right along with the other two instruments out there bar number seven rose momentum indicator signal price above uh, resistance and likely to rally unless we get that bearish reversal candle and finally the equal weighted etf the equal weighted etf uh, has formed a as uh, an a to b equal cd pattern the upside looks like that was uh that formed on Friday. The volume was 117 million uh, shares at its swing point, only 44 million shares. Does that mean it won't do an A to B equals C depending on the upside? It does not mean that. It means that just simply pass that B point uh, with lighter volume out there. I do see that we are in wave number seven on the daily time frame for the equal weighted ETF. That requires a uh, uh, a lower high in order to confirm that pattern. So I'd say uh, watch the QQEW out there for a clue, and then obviously the other instruments. Now let's move off from the NQs out here, and probably we head to the ES Mini. Looks like we may have to do this when we come back from the break, but on the daily time frame, bar number eight on the cash indice. We'll look at the equity future contract. We're only in bar number four. Which one is right, Stevie? They're both right, and we have to keep an eye on both of them. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So looky there, folks. We're at new all-time highs in the S&P 500, the ES Mini, the SPY. And take a look at where we're at with regard to the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. Not even close. In fact, it's just consolidating with inside its profiles out there. Now, we did get a... No, we won't get that. So even though today we become bar number nine of a TD9 count, we will not get a TD9 count bottom pattern inside the equal weighted ETF. So S&P cash index bar number eight, that says a top could come from the cash indice side between today and Wednesday out there. The ES mini would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. The uh, SPY is in bar number seven. Uh, so uh, one day behind what we've got inside of the S&P 500 cash indice. So we'll just have to keep track of each of these, understand support levels out there uh, should price move lower and of course uh, if we do get those uh, topping signals out there the first move lower is typically to that oscillator and change line out there so we'll certainly keep an eye on the uh, spies but uh, much like we've got a mixed bag with regard to the markets looks like we've mixed bag with regard to the instruments inside of the S&P 500. And finally, the Russell 2000. What's the Russell 2000 doing out here? Well, on the uh, daily time frame, geez, forget that. I don't even know why that profile's in there. Shouldn't be there. Stevie will get rid of that. Um, I don't really have much to report on a daily time frame, uh, nor do I really on the, on the uh, when I say the daily time frame for the cash indice. For the equity future contract, what we know is that last, well, the week before, we had a nice little rally in price found resistance at the center, really the bottom of that bearish structured or bullish structured uh, daily profile. Uh, so not until the Russell 2000 uh, equity future contract close above 2090 will any rally be termed anything other than just simply a counter trend move and with regard to the IWM consolidation with inside its profile levels uh, the top of that profile is at 205.73 so that's what's going on we take a look at the uh, uh, S&P the NASDAQ the uh, Dow and the uh, Russell 2000 out there we do have a few questions that have come in so why don't we get to those so we don't get too far behind and uh, let's start by taking a look at uh, RTX for Alton and Alton 
Alton wants to take a look at support and resistance. So first, uh, with regard to the daily time frame, Alton, you have a brand new profile formed on Friday. Support is 99.91, resistance 101.59. Uh, do I see a bottom pattern on the daily time frame? I do not see a bottom pattern. Doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. I just don't see one. If we did get a close below, I would say the candle session from a few days ago, that would be on July 2nd out there. And that low would be 99.07. If that gives way, 95.58 would become your target, the TD9 count breakout area. The weekly time frame, we've had two consecutive closes. Got a Rosemontum indicator top. That was confirmed the week of June 14th. We closed below it two weeks ago, it being the bottom of its profile. The same thing on uh, Friday. Uh, we are at the bottom of that profile, by the way. You wanted support areas, 98.11. Uh, we're at 170 right now. If price remains below the bottom of that profile, we're likely headed lower. But watch those daily uh, levels that we took a look at. And finally, when we take a look at the monthly time frame out here, the monthly time frame uh, has found resistance at its breakout level at 104.91. Likely going to go target. It's also in change line. That's down at 97.47. So, uh, Alton, that's what I see. Oh, you asked about an A to B equals CD pattern in a weekly time frame. Um, I'm presuming you're asking about maybe an A to B equals CD to the upside. So I do I, it with maybe just about a 0 0.382 retracement. The answer I would say right now, it could, but I don't see it. Why don't I see it? Because we just had two consecutive closes below the bottom of that profile with Rhodes Mentum Indicator Top. It's a, without a daily bottom pattern out there, it's suggesting that this is more likely going to head lower than head higher and create some type of very large A to B equals CD pattern. So it's not impossible. It's just I don't see it at the uh, moment. And if you're talking about A to B equals CD to the downside, I don't see that as uh, well out there. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. We've got a request from Dan to take a look at Arbutus Pharma, A-B-U-S, which I believe is forming bar number nine of a TD9 count. No, it's bar, it's the bar following bar number nine. So this is going to be a very cool stock if you're in it or not in it uh, to watch today's high, whatever today's high is. Why is that? This is the bar following bar number nine. That's going to set up a TD9 count top. Let's assume that that day's high has already been put in. Right now, that high is at 332. If price were to close above 332, this would tell you about a strong upward momentum move, which is a possibility because price is above its daily profile resistance level and above its green oscillator and change line. So that would suggest if this TD9 count top fails, Dan, that we head back to the highs of June out there. The highs of June being anywhere, I would say, between the swing point low at uh, $3.30 and the swing point high, $3.64. The weekly time frame chart, which has a Rhodesman indicator top, found support at the bottom of its profile. It's now trading above that green oscillator and change line. Its overall signal is neutral. It's cautious, but neutral out there. This looks like to me what our, our ABUS wants to do is move up to 344. However, I can't make that statement now, knowing that the daily, I mean, I made the statement, but I can't, um, I can't, uh, um, oh, shoot, that didn't go through. I can't, uh, uh, we won't know the answer to that until we and what we, well what's going to take what needs to take place. Gee, Stevie, would you just spit it out already? Uh, what needs to take place is the TD nine count pattern on the daily time frame is going to need to fail in order to get up to three forty four. And finally, on the uh, monthly chart, looks pretty good. It's a red oscillator and change line, so you still have the price oscillator that's below zero. So it's sort of a bearish condition out there. Uh, but what I do see, uh, you know, is this kind of a series of higher highs and higher lows out there. Bar number seven on the monthly base was last month, so you don't have any kind of a topping pattern uh, there. So I think it's the daily and the weekly that we have to pay attention to. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Dan, with regard to Arbutus. Watch that TD9 count that's going to complete today. That should uh, provide. And by the way, if this uh, what should unfold here is price should pull back to that oscillator and change on around 317 out there. Dan wants to take a look at DraftKings. Steve is going to try to be a little bit smoother with his uh, words and grammar out there, but only time will tell. G-Man, we take a look at DraftKings out here. DraftKings formed a uh, bullish structured profile. That price has been below for the last week and a half or so. Price is trying to get back in there. So here's the first key thing to be watching. In order for this to be anything other than a counter trend move, you're going to need to see DraftKings close above 38.82. If it can pull that off, then you'll see DraftKings run up to 40.27. That's the top of its uh, daily profile. On a weekly time frame, you have a Rhodesman indicator top, price trading with inside a bullish structured profile. The buy zone is between 35.59 and 37. 
3797 out there. Now, we can see that the rally from uh, a few weeks ago found resistance at that green oscillator and change line. So consolidation with inside the daily, uh, the weekly profile, but you've got strong resistance at 4164. Of course, we know we have potentially really strong resistance at 3882. So you clear 3882, that says 4160. Of course, the top of the daily profile, 4027. And in the case of the monthly time frame chart out here, let me just open this up. I don't believe there's a top. Yeah, I don't see a topping pattern out there. Uh, what I do see is a price that is trading with inside its profile and continues to find support at that uh, monthly oscillator and change line, currently printed at 36.77. So you got to watch 38.82 on a rally. Of course, if price doesn't close above 38.10, and especially if it closes below 37.61, what that's telling you, G-Man, is to move back to 35.49. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back to this break. We're looking at Amazon, Gurn, LBTR, Double A P A R Q T Fat E X K G A T O. We got a lot to look at. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. We take a look at Amazon. This is for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. And we take a look at this. Uh, what we see out here is we see a daily TD9 count top. That pattern went ahead and completed on July the 3rd out there. The high of that pattern is 200.43. If price were to close above that, that pattern would fail. We would likely continue to move higher. However, there is a Rosemontum indicator signal that is present. And therefore, if we were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm its next potential top out there. Now, when we take a look at so when you get a td9 count top which completed a couple days ago typically what price is going to do if that top is going to take hold to start moving back towards the oscillator and change line uh, what we can see though is in the following day the following day being friday what we saw was a higher low and a higher high today we see a higher low and a higher high out there so I'm not so sure that this TD9 count pattern is going to hold out there. Of course, we won't. We'll know for sure if there's a close GMAN above 200.43. But right now, it's kind of signaling to you and I, at least it's not ready to let that pattern take hold. On a weekly time frame, everything remains bullish out there. When I say everything, I mean because price is trained above profile and oscillator and change line resistance. The monthly time frame is getting ready to form bar number eight. Of course, we know that bar number nine has to form out there. In order for bar number nine to form that would mean that in the month of august price would have to close above 175 we're trading at 199.91 right now so it's got the potential to form a top between the month of july that we're in and quite frankly uh september out there because it can be our bar number nine it needs to be you know bar number nine has to at least complete and of course that high can be on bar number 10 like we were taking a look at it, one of the instruments earlier this morning out there so that's what i see g man we take a look at amazon hope that helps you out let's go on to the next request from dude inside the tiger's den and dude wants to take a look at g-e-r-n so what do we have going on here? We take a look at this instrument on a daily time frame. Price is running into potential resistance. That's its oscillator and change line. This formed a TD9 count pattern. It closed below the bottom of its daily profile for one, two, three, four consecutive sessions. Got back inside it on Friday. Um, counter trend rally would end here at that oscillator and change line. And that right now is printed at 460. If price is able to close about 460 out there, dude, then that would be telling you and I, because it's a green oscillator and change line, odds would favor a move up to the 502 level. The sell zone on this is between 502 and 518. The weekly time frame chart adds that idea. So we didn't see any kind of a bottom pattern on the daily time frame. Why did price stop where it did? Turns out, if you look at last week's session, we can see that weekly green oscillator and change line held out there. And so that is why uh, price stopped where it did. So now we got to do is watch that 460 level on the week monthly time frame. I don't see any kind of a topping signal. Uh, looks like price wants to continue to rally. 460 is going to be the key number to watch there, Gurn. You get above that, this is likely to head higher. Did I say Gurn? I mean, dude, uh, or whatever I said. I can't remember what I said. Uh, let's take a look at uh, that's terrible, isn't it? Let's take a look at that. Uh, dude wanted to take a look at L. TBR. Stevie mispronounced it that uh, first time out there. But luckily, we've got folks inside the Tiger's Den that watch my Heidi out there. And, uh, and thank goodness for that. Now, if we take a look at LTBR, what we see here is that price is running into resistance. This is quite a wide ranging profile in a daily time frame. Goes from support at 302 up to 448. I don't know what that percentage is, but that looks like about, you know, 35 percent or so out there. And that was just quick math in my mind. And I'm sure that math is way off base. But uh, what price is doing out here is running into resistance. I don't see any kind of a top, I believe. No, I don't see any kind of a top out here. It does have that Rosemontum indicator signal that triggered today. So if you were to see a uh, bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a, a top out there in support. First level would be about 360. Second level would be at 302 to 323 out there. So daily looks pretty good, just a consolidation. Weekly says as soon as you can finish that consolidation and close above 448, then it will be ready to make a move to 516. And 516 is a TD9 count breakdown resistance for the weekly time frame. Prices of Above its oscillator and change line and above profile and above its first TD9 count breakdown level. So that looks pretty strong. Just waiting on the daily time frame. The monthly chart is also waiting on the daily time frame. If uh, the monthly chart, because it's trading above its oscillator and change line out there, I don't know if there was some kind of bottom pattern. It would have to have been an eight. Well, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, we take a look at that. 
So we won't worry about that. But what you have inside the monthly chart at this moment in time for July the 8th is you have a profile change in trend. And that will be confirmed at the end of the month with a close above 366. So that's what I see. We take an LTBR. Hope that helps everybody out. Watch that 448 level. You close above that, you're off to the moon. Of course, the moon, I gave you some of the price targets out there. Maybe it's not exactly the moon, but you know what I mean out there. Let's go take a look at uh, double AP. Is that advanced auto parts, AAP out there? I believe that it is. Let's go take a look at its chart and see what it's signaling to you and I. This is for Dan in New York City, a different Dan. And he's wondering, are there TD9 counts for the daily and the weekly time frame? Well, you did form bar number eight on Friday. Bar number nine will complete today as long as price closes below. This is going to be important. Close below 50. Whoops. Closes below 59.71. Uh, no, I take... Uh, yeah, 59.71. If price closed below 59.71 today, Dan, this will then form a TD9 count bottom, and that pattern can go ahead and complete tomorrow. There's a Rosemont indicator signal that's present. A bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom. The first level that price needs to close above in order for there to be any kind of upside traction, Dan, is going to be 59.76 or thereabouts. That is its daily oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame formed bar number eight last week. So in order for bar number nine, Nine to form this week, you just simply need to see a close on Friday below 63.42. If you get that, then you will have TD nine count patterns for the weekly chart. Don't know where the daily chart will be by Friday, but yes, a good visual out there. Does that mean you take the trade right now? That's another good question. Let's take a look at some short-term time frame charts. Usually, if an instrument is going to form a bottom for its daily time frame, you'll see a bottom for the intradays. So the 65-minute chart has a TD9 count bottom, but price consolidated with inside its profiles. A close above 59.27, really two 65-minute closes above that, will get us up to 60.52. How about that 30-minute chart? Do we have any kind of bottom signal there? Um, not that I see. Um, and then lastly, let's look at the 130-minute time frame chart, see if there's anything out there. I see a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom that has formed. Now here, the first level of resistance so far has failed this morning. That is at 59.43. Remember, there are three 130-minute bars each day that form out there. You can figure out the time from there. If price is able to close by 59.43, you should see a run up to 60.32 and then 60.77. If price can close above that, you'd be looking pretty good at a likely bottom. But remember, you still have to close below those lows that I gave to you in order for bar number nine to complete both for the daily and the weekly time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back this break. We're going to start taking a look at ARQT, PHAT, EXK, GATO, HL, and IGM. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Stevie is lost in his, huh, interesting out there. I must have overwritten something. I think I did. So let's go on to, uh, I'll skip ARQT at the moment since I can't really find it, but we'll go on to FAT, P-H-A-T out there. Nothing like talking about a little FAT at 11.42 in the morning just before lunchtime out there. P-H-A-T is the uh, ticker symbol, and that is Phantom Pharmaceuticals out there. So Phantom Pharmaceuticals um, is trading below its daily profile. It's been below there for about four, well, it's been below there for almost a couple of weeks. So they're being 10.75. As long as price remains below that level, odds favor move back to breakout support, and that would be at 950. So watch 1075 if you close above it for two consecutive sessions, and you had maybe 1150, 1225. Otherwise, you could be looking at a 950 print. Weekly charts been consolidating with inside its profiles for the last uh, almost two months out there. So now you know you've got a consolidation between the levels of 909 and 1121. Turns out on a monthly basis, we've had a consolidation for the last six months out there, two, four, six, with this being the... Uh, yeah, six months. Actually, it's been consolidating for more than that, six, seven, eight, almost a full year out here. So the levels to be watching are going to be 1155. We can see that last month that was tested, rejected. Two months before that, tested, rejected. So the real key area to the upside would be a monthly close above 1155 out there. Uh, so you got lots of consolidations going on inside Phantom Pharmaceuticals on a daily time frame. It is in a slightly rising, if we pull this back enough, you can see a slightly rising uh, price channel or trend channel out there. But nonetheless, it's still trading below that daily profile. It just says be careful out there with P H A T. Let's go on to that next request. This is for E X K. E well, actually, what we'll do here. Is before I do that, let me just put ARQT out here. ARQT. Let's go ahead and fire up those charts. I don't believe I did that during that last segment. And if I did, geez, my apologies. Stevie's really losing it. We take an ARQT. It's having a heck of a day. Yes, or a heck of a day on Friday. And that heck of a day took price above its TD knockout breakout level at 10.02. For some reason, we're back inside that area. Was that a false breakout signal? Let's say at 11.44 in the morning, Stevie would say yes. However, at 4 p.m., if price closed again above 10.02, that would uh, suggest that we had higher. Now, the resistance that it's trading into is that bearish shooting star candle from the uh, trading session of May 22nd. Volume there was 4.5 million shares. On Friday, we closed inside that uh, candle with about 3 million shares. So we closed inside lighter, lighter uh, with lighter volume. We're still inside it today. As long as price remains in it, the only way it won't remain in it would be a close below 9.52. So as long as price remains in it, it suggests it wants to at least go test that high. Adding to that idea would be a close above 10.02. On a weekly time frame for ARQT, 
see you, what you've got here is a consolidation with insiders' profiles between 783 and support. 1235 is resistance. The monthly chart is trading above profile levels out there. So the monthly just waited on the daily and the weekly to figure out what the Sam heck ARQT wants to do. Let's go take a look at EXK right now. Uh, this is uh, for uh, Dwayne in uh, Denver. And we take a look at EXK. What do we know? Well, the first thing that we know is that price on Friday closed above the top of its daily profile. We're trading above that today, that being for buckaroonies. Now it's trading into its swing point that takes us back to May 28th. That swing had volume of 8.7 million shares, closed inside it on Friday with uh, 4.9 million shares. First two hours of trading, we're at about 2.4. So we're at about the same level, you know, four and a half to five million shares as it moves into a swing point that has volume of 8.7. Nonetheless, as long as price remains inside that swing point, and that means a close about four bucks even, Stephen, odds favorite wants to go test that level. The weekly time frame has resistance at the top of its profile. I don't have any kind of messages out here. There we go. I don't see a top. On a weekly basis, just see a consolidation. Resistance there is 420. The top of that swing point that we were taking a look at is 420 as well. So if price can close above that, you can get an A to B equal CD pattern of the upside out there. And if that happens, I want you right back and we'll take a look at that. Monthly chart looks relatively bullish as price is above resistance level. So it's the daily and the weekly that you really want to keep your eye on, Dwayne. Hope that helps you out. Gato Barbieri is in the house out there. G A T O. Nothing like a smooth sax like that. And Gato Barbieri is a trading above the top of its daily profile. It closed above that on Friday. A second close today gives you a profile change in trend. And what that would suggest is a move up to the 1256 level. 1256 is a TD nine count breakdown area. Huh, this chart also didn't populate for its weekly time frame, but Stevie will take care of that. We don't see a weekly top or anything. We just see a consolidation with inside its bullish structured profile. The support zone or buy zone is between 959 and 1042 with 1042 having been tested last week this week out there so that's really your strong support level so it looks like uh the daily says i want to move higher the weekly watch 1135 ish it probably able to close above 1135 ish then that's going to really tell us that move to 1256 is underway and at 1289 you have the top of it so we do have more data out here no. At 1289, you have the uh, top of its weekly profile. Monthly chart out there is trading above profile resistance. Uh, it does have a TD9 count top, but uh, that hasn't really done much out there. So the TD9 count top is suggesting price should pull back to test the 806 level. But that's not what the daily chart says, and that is not what the weekly chart is telling us right now. So I believe the monthly chart will get its P's and Q's from the daily and the weekly and right now that says, I'd say watch 1146. If price closed above, call it 1150. Price closed above 1150, you're on your way to 1256 out there. And that is Gatto Barbieri. Let's go take a look at Hecla. HL is a ticker symbol there. See what this one is doing. Hecla is trading with inside its daily profile. You've got a buy zone between 485 and 491, and your sell mark is at 533. That's the daily time frame. Turns out, why did price stop where it did last week? Well, if you look at the weekly time frame chart, it's that gosh darn oscillator and change line. What a great tool that is. The oscillator and change line printed at 522. Two. What price needs to do in order to suggest to you wants to really move higher is close above on a weekly basis 529. Why 529, Stevie? Because 529 is the center of its bullish structured weekly profile. And you close above a weekly, a bull, you close above the center of a bullish structured profile. That says that buyers should be able to run up to the top. The top being 612. So watch 533 first. If price can close above that, then you'll know price is going to go target the 592 to 612 area with 631 being your monthly resistance level out there. So that's Hecla. Let's go take a look at IGM. And then we will have gone through all of the requests out there. Now that's a beautiful thing. IGM is bullish on the daily time frame, likely to continue to move higher. It's above profile resistance, above a green oscillator and chain line. 
It does have a Rosemont Dominicator signal that's present. That says just watch for a bearish reversal candle. You're at bar number seven today. Maybe this forms a TD9 count top as we move into Wednesday, Thursday of this week out there. The weekly is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top on Friday out there, unless this thing just falls apart. But at this moment, that's what it looked like. Remember, that pattern can complete the following week. And on a monthly basis, you are at bar number nine right now. So this has got the potential for a uh, top out here uh, that could really take us back a bit. When I say a bit, I'm referring to a $97 stock and that bit being between $82.89 and $84.76. But right now, for the daily time frame, it says onward and northward, and that is ticker symbol IGM. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, still got a mixed bag out there. Dow's down 41 points, S&P at 4, NASDAQ 143, and the Russell's up 12. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. I was just going through my emails. I see I've got one here from Under Armour. Uh, I'm always reminded by the story of the Armour family out there, A-R-M-O-U-R. -R. I don't know if you guys know the story or not. Kind of an interesting story out there. And um, I think it was the guy's father... I know it was Jay Ogden Armour, um, and I think he was a son. I think his father started it back during the Civil War and uh, provided, you know, kinds of meat, rations, all that kind of stuff during the Civil War. But then during the uh, First World War, I believe that's when Ogden, and, and he became the second wealthiest man in the uh, world. Now, his holdings are reported to have been back then, if you use it in today's dollars, um, would be well over a trillion bucks. 
he ran into bad luck after World War One because he had stocked up uh, and uh, stock it his stock had traded high, but he also had stocked up on everything. The war ended, didn't need all that meat packing stuff. And this guy here, he still may hold the Guinness World Book of Records for consecutive um, daily losses. He lost, um, and by the way, he 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 went from being the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest men on the planet, to being poor and destitute. He lost on a daily basis. Think about this. This is back then. He lost a million dollars a day each day. I don't remember the exact number. It's like 130, 131 days in a row, something like that. Can you believe that? Uh, and uh, so apparently there was no way out. Maybe it was just all of his stock holdings were all in just uh, that instrument and he couldn't sell out there. So kind of a uh, terrible story. Anyways, we do have the stock charts up here for the ES Mini. So we'll close out the show here. So the, the topping signals, there's a couple of them out there. For example, the four-hour time frame chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top at 2 p.m. If price is able to close below 56.20, we should see a move to 56.09. You've got a roads to indicator pattern that's going to complete at 12 noon. So in just a few moments out there, prices back inside this profile you could see a move back to the 5609 5613 level and it's a 10 minute chart that might really give you that signal whether we're going to see those lower moves out there because it has a TD9 count top out there and price is pulled back and it keeps testing that breakout level 562475 so watch that you get two consecutive 10 minute bars below that and that could be signaling a further move lower for the ES mini folks stay tuned for all the great crowing hey tomorrow i'm going to be recording the show between 8 and 9 so please join me early for tea and crumpets. Take care. Have a marvelous Monday, folks.